men and women mm. from economic facts and fallacies. I'm quoting you to yourself, Tom. Quote, it is widely believed that the rise of American women in high-level occupations since the 1960s has been due to anti-discrimination laws and that these, in turn, have been due to the feminist movement. In reality, the proportion of women in high-level occupations was greater during the first decades of the 20th century than in the middle of the 20th century, and all of this was before the feminist movement. Explain. Uh, yes, in the first half of the 20th century, for example, uh, in 1908, the percentage of women in who's who in America was twice what it was in 1950. Uh, and various fields, if you look at the uh, women who got PhDs in uh, economics, chemistry, uh, who got law degrees, other postgraduate degrees, uh, those were all higher in the 20s and 30s than they were in the 50s. Uh, and there was a very simple reason for it. Uh, women in those days got married later. Uh, in, the, in the early years. In of the, the early years. Right. Uh, over time, the age of marriage and the er age of uh, uh, beginning to have children began to decline. And the classic uh, uh, era was, of course, the era of the baby boom. And that that's when women hit, hit, a, hit a low in their proportion of the postgraduate degrees uh, and in the professions in which those degrees would be used. Now, hmm. around 1956, right. um, the age of marriage began rising. And in 1957, uh, the age of having children rose, strangely enough. Uh, and, and as that rise continued, uh, you saw women rising again in these various professions. So that now one of the professions they reached in 1972, the same proportion they had had back in 1932. Mm -hmm. uh, and as the age of marriage kept rising and as the number of children kept falling, women went on to higher and higher uh, levels. Now, the people on the other side... Uh, say the opposite by the simple expedient of, not, of looking as if the world began in 1960. They, don't, they, they ignore all the rest of that, uh, and they say it's all due to the, to the feminist movement, to anti-discrimination laws, and so forth. Well, you're right. I'm going to quote you again. Among the many factors which influence male-female economic differences, the most elusive is employer discrimination. Yes, that, that when you correct for all the various factors, such as the number of hours worked, uh, the continuous employment versus taking time, taking a few years out to have, have children and so on. You take all that into account, mm -hmm. the differences between men and women uh, become quite trivial. If you look at the academic world, or as far back as 1969, women who were never married and who had, uh, earned higher incomes than men who had never married, they became a tenured professor at a higher rate than men who had never married. Uh, and then later on, if you look at the general population, if you take the women who are past the childbearing years and who work continuously, their incomes were higher than men who would work continuously and so on. So the difference is, is that not that the employer is paying them differently, but that they have different characteristics. So the central variable in explaining economic differences between men and women is not employer discrimination, not the rise of feminism. Mm -hmm. It's that women, it's, 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 it's child rearing, marriage and child rearing. That's yes. the variable. As that varies... Uh, a women's uh, arrival or participation rate in high-level occupations varies with that. that that's Absolutely. The okay. Now, in principle, you note, family responsibilities could be perfectly evenly divided between fathers and mothers. But that isn't the way it has worked in practice. Quote, I'm quoting you again, since economic consequences follow from practices rather than principles, the asymmetrical division of domestic responsibilities produces male-female differences in income, close quote. Question, what are the policy implications of that? If we become fixed on eliminating male-female income differences, is it the case that the only choice, the only route for doing that, is to uh, involve the government in redesigning the very nature of the family? Well, the, the, or am I, draw, am I leaping to a melodramatic conclusion? No, no, no. Uh, yeah, and it's, and logically, that, that's certainly true. However, not, not all domestic responsibilities can be shared equally, such as having babies, uh, which is not an inconsequential thing since the existence of the human race depends on it. Uh, but what it, what it means is that women make choices that make a lot of sense for them. Uh, for, for example, the choice of occupations, that women tend not to go into occupations in which there's a very high rate of obsolescence. I mean, and if, if, if you're a uh, computer, in, computer engineer uh, and you take five years out to, uh, to have a child and have the child up to the age where you can put him in daycare, yeah. well, my gosh, the world has Your changed. Your job is gone. Yeah, yeah the, you'd have to start way, way, way back. 
Uh, on the other hand, if you become a librarian, you become a teacher, uh, other occupations like that, then you can take your five years off, come back, and pick up pretty much where you left off. Right.